Good morning. Pastor Sean here on Monday, August 3rd, uh, thanking you for joining me for today's morning prayer. So let us begin. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hand formed the dry land. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Give glory to God, our light and our life. O come, let us worship him. Okay, our reading picks up today on, uh, or in Acts 27, verses 9 through 26. Since much time had passed, and the voyage was now dangerous because even the fast was already over, Paul advised them, saying, Sirs, I perceive that the voyage will be with injury and much loss, not only of the cargo and the ship, but also our lives. But the centurion paid more attention to the pilot and to the owner of the ship than to what Paul said. And because the harbor was not suitable to spend the winter in, the majority decided to put out to sea from there, on the chance that somehow they could reach Phoenix, a harbor of Crete, facing both southwest and northwest, and spend the winter there. Now when the south wind blew gently, supposing that they had obtained their purpose, they weighed anchor and sailed along Crete, close to the shore. But soon a tempestuous wind, called the North Northeaster, struck down from the land. And when the ship was caught and could not face the wind, we gave way to it and were driven along. Running under the lee of a small island called Cauda, we managed with difficulty to secure the ship's boat. After hoisting it up, they used supports to undergird the ship. Then, fearing that they would run aground on Sirtis, they lowered the gear and thus were driven along. Since we were violently storm-tossed, they began the next day to jettison the cargo. And on the third day, they threw the ship's tackle overboard and with their own hands, when neither sun nor stars appeared for many days. And no small tempest lay on us. All hope on our being saved, uh, of our being saved was at last abandoned. Since they had been without food for a long time, Paul stood up among them and said, Men, you should have listened to me and not set sail from Crete and incurred this injury and loss. Yet now I urge you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For this very night there stood before me an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I worship. And he said, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must stand before Caesar. And behold, God has granted you all those who sail with you. So take heart, men, for I, have, for I have faith in God that it will be exactly as I have been told. But we must run aground on some island. In many and various ways, God spoke to his people of old by the prophets, but now in these last days, he's spoken to us by his son. All right, well, we have a continuation of the story that we've been following, and uh, we missed the reading from yesterday, uh, Sunday. And basically, that was just uh, uh, the conclusion of his trial, of Paul's trial, and then... Uh, the, the kind of getting ready to set sail to uh, Italy so that Paul could go to Rome and stand before Caesar. So what we have here is for the most part just a, a detail of um, the trouble at sea that they experienced. And then, of course, at the very end where Paul stands up to give them comfort and hope and to tell them that God had told, them in a, told him in a vision that everybody would be fine. So there's that. Now, one wrong way to uh, take this text would be to um, look at what happens here where, where, where God preserves Paul and everybody on the ship and says, you know, no one's, no one's going to lose their life. It's all going to be fine. Um, and, uh, and just directly apply that to like any trouble that we're in and say like, oh, see, don't worry because God will, God will make sure that us and everybody is just fine. Um, that might certainly be the case. He might do that. Um, however, the, the difference here is that Paul had an angel from God come to him and tell him directly, this is what God is doing. So unless you have that, <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, there's no guarantee that if you are in a dangerous, life-threatening situation that, oh, well, don't worry, just like Paul was fine, I'm going to be fine. It's like, maybe... Maybe not. Um, ultimately, uh, you will be fine like Paul in that you are in 
the Lord's hands. And so neither life nor death can separate you from God. So yes, in that sense, um, you can always, you know, we can always trust in, in God that he will bring us through either through life or through death. Uh, ultimately always through death, he will, he'll bring us to him. So there's that. Um, what we definitely see here is that God is preserving Paul to give him, to get him to where he's supposed to go. Um, that God has sent him a, a message saying, like, yes, I, I'm with you. But a, a nice little practical thing for us is how Paul um, stands and, and shares God's word with them to give them hope and, and peace and comfort in a very dangerous, stressful time. Now, in Paul's case, it's, it's a, it's a, the word of comfort is, is actually their life, you know, that God has said, you know, I will transfer, transport you all safely. So that's there's that, but um, what he does here is is a good reminder for us that you know we do have a word of comfort from God, which may not speak to exactly every situation. You know, like oh well, if you're in this one place at this time, then you can actually say that everything is. We don't have that, but we have the hope and assurance of forgiveness of sins, the everlasting life through Christ's shed blood, and all this other good stuff. So uh, we do have words of comfort and hope that we can provide to anybody, anytime, anywhere. And so, you know, what Paul does is for all these people around him, he stands up and shares God's word and says, look, this is what God has said. Take, take comfort in this. Um, and so, like I said, while it's not a, um, you know, we, we wouldn't want to apply the exact same situation. Uh, we certainly can say that when we find ourselves, um, in difficult times and in, in, in life-threatening times even and we're with others you know we we can stand up and share with them god's word which is to bring comfort and, and hope to every situation um so it is you know be be prepared to do that and it's not it's not that hard um you know i i often when people ask like well what would i say you know i, I don't know how to share you know explain my faith to somebody you know, it's, it's a very, we get this thing, it's, it's a very personal thing for me. I, I, I don't, whatever, I don't necessarily want to share it or I don't know how to share it in, in a way that would, you know, because this is very personal to me. And the thing I always have to remind people is like, you know, faith isn't personal. <laughs> I mean, we experience it in a personal way, sure. But our faith is in something that is documented and historic and for everyone. So yes, you might have experienced God's work in, in a very personal way, but the faith that you have is based in something that is very well documented and solid and um, accessible to everybody. And if you are in a pinch, you, need, you can just share with them the, the Apostles' Creed. That's the, that's the short one. <laughs> you know, just go through that, and that explains basically the whole deal. I mean, the Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, they are a summary of our faith, a summary of the story of salvation, um, what God has done through Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So what, what he did, what he's doing, what he will do. So that's a wonderful way to um, explain and share your faith. And then from there, you can say, that's, that's why I have hope right now. That's why I can look out at this situation and know that, you know what, God's going to take care of me. It's like, oh, what, what, if, what if he doesn't? What if you die? It's like, especially if I die, I know God will take care of me. Because um, that's, you know, that's the ultimate fear. What if? And uh, the Apostles' Creed, Nicene Creed, <laughs> they answer that very clearly. Um, you know, I wait for a resurrection of the dead. That's what awaits me. So, good good uh, reminder for us that you know, we have a word that speaks comfort in every situation. And we should not be afraid to share that and speak it. All right. Well, let us pray. O oh Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, you have safely brought us the beginning of this day. Defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all of our doings, being ordered by your governance, may be righteous in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and trusting in his promises, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me this morning and starting off your week uh, this way. So I hope you have a great day, and peace be with you.